the audit committee meeting for October 17th, uh, Monday at eight o'clock, um, something I do want to talk about again, but um, <clears throat> all members are present and accounted for. Um, the <laughs> first item uh, is to approve the agenda. I do have one item to add to the agenda under new business, which is filling vacancies. Um, <clears throat> Hillary and I have been having some discussions. So with that amendment, can I have a motion to approve the agenda or any other amendments? A motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. I, I, the eyes have it. <clears throat> Next item is approval of the minutes from the September 19th meeting. Are there any corrections, amendments, or is there a motion to approve? So There's moved. nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> is there a second? Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you for the minutes, Nikki. Or whoever did it, I think there's sort of a revolving chair. Good morning, Jody. Um, <clears throat> on old business, we have three items which are kind of standing items. Um, performance objectives and strategic plans, I think, um, have been folded together. At our last meeting, we talked about the need to do more work on performance objectives or performance measures, I believe that should be, but that um, we would wait until <clears throat> after we've done our work on the strategic plan. And I think the city manager has an update for us on strategic plan. Yes, uh, Ross. In fact, I just heard back from Julia Novak this morning and she's given the option of January 7th or 28th which are Saturdays, which is what you wanted. So I'll leave it up to you or we can work on setting the um, time through my office with the council members, but those are the two dates she gave. I need to work with her on one with uh, our staff, but I'm working with um, Trisha on a retreat uh, that's kind of running parallel with the directors for earlier in December. Okay, thank you. So the just to reiterate, the plan is to have two uh, retreats, one with the senior staff and one with the city council to review the current strategic plan and go through an exercise of determining <clears throat> any changes we might want to make. I'm assuming after that, Mike, that there'll be some sort of exercise where we bring everybody together. Right. So yes. it'll be a two-part yeah process. Um, Trisha and I were talking about that on Friday and we pinned that not pinned down but we've decided on an approach for the director's strategic uh, plan and it'll entail just to give you some background a disc evaluation which is sort of like a Myers-Briggs and we get together and we also have a period of time that we're going over the strategic plan and then Presumably, this I think the seventh would probably be better with the council because it's a little earlier in the in the budget cycle, and then from there we'll get together, you know, all together um, with the directors. But I haven't pinned down that time. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think the sooner the better. But <clears throat> just I, I've just pulled down the old strategic plan, and I think some of the salient uh, uh, <clears throat> components of it are. Uh, coming up with a shared vision, a vision statement, and a mission statement, and then coming up with some key goals that um, were in the plan. And I'm, I, I don't know that everybody, and in fact, I don't know that anybody other than me, possibly you, Rhonda, have the full, um, thick report, which not only includes the strategic plan, but also includes a, a citizen survey, <clears throat> which if you'll recall back to our budget, the way we budgeted this is money for developing a new strategic plan 
but also money for doing the citizen survey. And um, <clears throat> I think the two should fit hand in glove. That's obviously be decided by the council and the city manager and the uh, senior staff, but uh, having mission and vision and goals and objectives is great, but if you don't have any way of monitoring externally how you're doing, it, it feels like it's incomplete. So I've always viewed these as a package, and I think I, I won't put words in the city manager, but I believe that's how we viewed it because that's how we did it the last time. Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, if you want, I can have um, a scan all of that and then make sure it gets to the entire audit committee so okay. everyone has it and i think i'm pretty sure but it might have just been with Rhonda and maybe ellie i had shared what we had done in charles county with the uh, national citizen survey in 2018 um, to give you an idea because it it candidly wasn't as helpful there because it was difficult to we could find similar communities but the real advantage of it is they have a database of several hundred communities that they compare you to, as well as what your own citizens say. And I think we'd be in a, in a position to benefit more from that than Charles County did. And I'll, I'll try to get a hold of that and scan it and, and send it to you all as well. And the <laughs> National Citizen Survey, just to give you a background, is affiliated with ICMA, the International City County Management Association. They're they're out of, um, I think, Boulder, Colorado. Oh, field trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pro probably somebody's <laughs> home office at this point, but right. a nice home office at that. <clears throat> so one of the problems I've had with our performance measures, which are a work in process, is that there's clearly diversity in what, what each of the departments do. Otherwise, they wouldn't be separate departments. But I think there's a much wider range of how they're doing their performance measures than <clears throat> the natural diversity would call for. And it seemed to me that part of the cause of that is that we don't have a uniting strategic plan and a, a set of uh, mission and vision and goals that we can all touch. And then similarly, when you get into the department and you start measuring staff performance through appraisals, it would seem that <clears throat> those would be much stronger. And I think also much clearer to staff if they were themselves linked to the performance measures for the department. So, but that's just the old federal bureaucrat in me uh, yearning for the way it was when uh, I was actually earning a living. So um, so that's that's good progress. I look forward to it and I assume you'll pull the council. My preference would be the seventh. Yeah, I think Jody or somebody mentioned to me that, you know, when we were talking January, that the process is going to start already going. And I, and I did see where um, there's a Katie sent out a schedule already that we're working on with Ellie. And, and Gavin's schedule that starts earlier. So yes, I think the seventh is what I'll tell her and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, good. Are there any other questions? I, I, the question I, I will have on that caveat is your colleagues may say, no, the 28th is better. So I'll just try to shoot for the seventh and we'll go from there. Well, at least there's a choice. Right. <clears throat> All the woman tyranny. Oh, thank you. I think Michael probably knows what I'm going to ask. Um, so it's something to think about or either uh, align with or differentiate from where it, it sounds like we're gonna have a, a, a city council session on the strategic plan. And then as you know, and you alluded to Kate sent out, we're working on the pre-budget meetings and we have had, we had success, I thought last year, having a, a work session establishing our priorities is it too soon to try to tie that in or, or are you gonna to try to do that this year? Well, sort of, do you, you know what I'm asking? Like, I saw your point, yeah, I, I hear you because I sat in on that last year. Oh, you did, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was helpful. Um, let's talk about it, Ellie, because um, yeah. if we do it on the 7th, that's kind of early and you might be able to, to do what you wanna do with the council 
in the in the work session to follow. Yeah, I think I just don't want my colleagues to think it's a redundant exercise that they're two different things and but they probably should be mm -hmm. focused, you know, long term going to the same direction. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll let's talk but I I yeah. see your point. You sent me the email and I was thinking uh, about what that would be but if we did it in December but if we can wait a couple of weeks it might be a good idea because then we'd have the strategic planning meeting and then we could do it yeah yeah but let's yeah. talk we'll let's go talk. thank you I, I think the next step is going to be uh, seeing the agenda for the retreat um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of the upfront work is going to be forming the consensus on the strategic uh, mission and vision and goals. And with us, <laughs> particularly me, I'll admit, who likes to talk, uh, I could take quite a bit of the day. So um, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, at least we're moving forward. And I'm, I'm pleased with that. And I thank you, Mike, for your efforts. So, uh, Jim, I can't tell whether you were thinking about asking a question or you're just Okay. Listening intently. No, no, listening. Um, I, I had a corollary question with regards to the strat plan. It's did not um, with regards to um, the performance measures. Are, are are they being reviewed on a quarterly basis right now? No. OK, <laughs> so we've scrapped the uh, submission. Departments are no longer submitting their performance goals, uh, and then reporting on their progress against those goals? Nothing right now. Uh, candidly, I had an insider view as a department director up until uh, August, and I'm not going to say there was a lot of robust activity going on, particularly once the assistant city manager left in January last year. She, that was her one of her tasks. And it started to slide a bit. So I think, and I, I don't want to put words in Ross's mouth, but I think we we wanted to try to build something a little more robust from the strategic planning process. And I, and I think we can. Um, Jim, I don't know whether you've seen what we did before, but it does build uh, uh, not only uh, performance measures, but a uh, dashboard process that we can uh, synthesize our progress. And it also does what Ross talks about, which is breaking departments out of particular silos, but put them into to groups that, that are working together on, on particular activities. So I think it'll work better if we, we pause. <clears throat> I just didn't, candidly, I didn't see a lot, a lot of value from what we were producing. Um, and, and now that I, I'm, uh, just to let you know, Tricia is putting together the job to add and advertising for the assistant city manager. So hopefully that'll be uh, ready by January. And, and my hope is that person will be really focused in on this activity as well. So that's a long answer to your question, Jim, but. Okay, no, thank you. Do, do you expect to be reviewing uh, financial performance on a quarterly basis with department heads? Well, I think that Jody already does that, and that I'd let her answer that. Um, I know she's trying to ramp up staffing right now, but I don't want to put words in her mouth either. So, Jody, <laughs> interim statements. Are you talking about the quarterlies? Yes. We we still do quarterly budget reports and submit them to council um, and finance committee. Um, the next one due is is the one for the first quarter ended um, September 30, but Katie hasn't prepared that yet, but is working on it. So, um, and then if we find <laughs> during the process that we have an issue with one of the departments, we work with them individually um, to ask why they're going over in certain categories. Thank and you. there may be merit to doing quarterly performance updates with the financial update, but uh, I my experience is that while I think you should have more than one because uh, if you find out that some things are going off the track, you need to know that before you get to the end end of the year and you're not in a successful place. Um, quarterly can tend to be kind of 
wrote, oh, we got to get something in in the quarter. And <clears throat> I think that we'll leave that to the city manager to judge the frequency. But I could certainly see something that's, say, trimester rather than quarterly um, so that it actually could require and, and hopefully get some robust um, information. Right. And, and Ross, also the, the monthly reports. Um, that's something I'd started a long time ago when I was here in, in previous uh, communities. And my goal will be to start that up again, too. And perhaps we build in the reporting in that, uh, that report, or whether it's monthly or every two months. Mm -hmm. What it became was really just an information uh, dump truck. <laughs> In law school, we used to say, is the test going to be a dump truck or is it going to be specific? And I think what the council wanted was more specific because the dump truck was not providing particularly helpful information. So it could very well be uh, financial information and performance goals as well. I haven't gotten to that point, but it's something likewise after the first of the year, I hope to have uh, started up again. And the monthly manager's report, speaking of dump trucks, <clears throat> seemed to be that. And it was just a conglomeration of stuff that each department threw in. I would much rather have from the city manager the one or two pages of things that the manager thinks we ought to know in order to do our job. And if it's not two pages, that's fine with me, too. The, the less, the more likely it is that I will read it when I get it as opposed to, oh, I've got to get to this. I'll set it aside and, and right. get to it. And then the next thing, you know, oh, here's another report, and I didn't read the last one. And right. I would assume one of the purposes of the report is to generate a dialogue between the city manager and council members saying, gee, I noticed you had a fire in the water purification plant. Wow, <laughs> that's big news which was a bit of news that we didn't get in a manager's report a few years ago. But in any event, um, yeah, I would, I'd much rather be a really fluid and concise communication vehicle that generates dialogue. But um, th okay. these are things we'll work our way through. And it really is, is so that you all aren't surprised. Right. One of the biggest jobs that someone in my position is to, to the best of our ability give you information that you need to have whatever like when you told us you were going to start the uh setting up for the boat shows or a week early which you know i think that made sense but it was also good to know you could start <laughs> it was a lot of fun the, that human interaction between the different entities was right yeah something's never changed <laughs> So um, with that, I'm prepared to move on to the one item of new business, if the committee is ready. And that is the new information that I've just received on Friday from uh, Hillary Raftovich, which is, uh, and if you look at the charter on the composition of the audit committee, apparently we fill our own um, citizen members. Um, so if we find a good candidate, we vet that candidate amongst ourselves. And if the committee is ready to accept that person. So we've had somebody that Jim recruited that has been waiting in the wings and maybe now no longer waiting in the wings uh, for a process to commence. And it turns out the process was with us. So when we get a recommendation to fill a vacancy, I think we need to immediately put that on our agenda, uh, get some background information, and then the, the existing members of the committee will vet that person and either select or move on to the next. But we could have had that vacancy filled probably three months ago. I, I, Jim, do you remember the name of the person? I can't. Yeah, uh, just a, uh, a point of clarification. Uh, it was uh, the person was identified by Alderman and Tierney in a constituent okay. service. Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm and uh, no, and then uh, Alderman Tierney asked me to speak to the candidate. Uh, and then she submitted an application through BNC back in August and uh, had not been contacted yet. So. Yeah, so it's even a question of who who would one submit 
their application to because the audit committee is a strange beast. It's not a standing committee and it's not operated like all the other standing committees. Our agendas don't go into I legislate <clears throat> and um, our fulfillment process is much more like a board or commission, which is Hillary Raftovich's province. But and then looking at uh, the charter, which I have in front of me, composition, it is silent on filling vacancies. It says what the position should be in the terms, but so I assume that um, we self-select uh, after some review process. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, Alderman Tierney, if you would like to uh, tell that person we're ready to receive uh, her and to talk to her, I, and maybe we should set up a subcommittee of people like apparently we have, which is Jim and Alderwoman Ellie, uh, uh, to re to interview the person. And <clears throat> I haven't seen a resume. That doesn't mean that I wasn't sent one. It just means I haven't seen it. But uh, I'm I'm all for. Um, trying to keep the committee as full as possible, so. Yeah, her name is um, Anne-Marie Baker. And okay. I, I left off where um, I gave the information, um, being Jim had more knowledge of the specifics of auditing principal and all, I, I asked him to interview her. And uh, I will contact her about what the status of her formal application is. Okay, I would appreciate that because we want to fill the vacancy. I just noticed that I was remiss, and I don't know whether this is a uh, psychological foible or what, but under old business, <clears throat> I left risk assessment uh, untouched, and it is very clearly in our um, code of responsibility of this committee, and I just saw a communication from Katie George on another matter. Uh, some of the other council members might have seen that, but um, that is something where there was a robust program initiated, and I think that it is something that I have to admit may well be that I'm the biggest stumbling block there, but it is clearly a responsibility outlined for us to do. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I want to um, treat that unless there's some input from the members in the same way that uh, when I give you my report from MML on how other communities do their audit function. Um, because one of my concerns about the risk assessment is how far does the purview of this, what is clearly a city council function venture into the administrative function of the city. And um, that was one of my concerns. My other concern is and we do have Jim and we did have Katie, but what expertise, and, and maybe Caroline, uh, you, I should include you, but what expertise do I have about identifying risks and, um, and then sorting them out? But I think that's possibly a misunderstanding on my part. Maybe the sole function of the committee is to identify an area of possible risk and then use our um, annual budget to pursue that risk in more detail with professionals and determine if in fact it is a risk and if so, what do we do about it? But um, Mike and then maybe Jim will want to apply. No, I was curious, Jody, would that be something that Corey would get involved in from your office? Or? The, the risk assessment that Katie George began had more to do with risk of loss of uh, financial assets or um, physical assets, not risk to employees. Corey's job focuses on safety for employees. Uh, so he's heavily involved in workers' comp, inspecting work sites, that kind of thing. Okay. So, um, so that's the kind of risk assessment. And she had us, Katie had all of us look at uh, the city and write down what we thought our, our thoughts were on the most risky areas, um, financial or non-financial assets and um, concerns about city operations. So 
Would that um, be tied into what Jackie was doing, Gail, on the resiliency survey? Because that was almost a specific exercise discussion on on risk. Are you familiar with that at all? I was. I, I yeah, it was a couple, several months ago. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think that was involved in this. Um, <clears throat> you could have. I mean, you could tie them in loosely. Um, I, I think the way the way we were doing it, getting everybody's thoughts, and then um, the committee was going to compile all of the thoughts and then determine um, what they thought, what the committee thought was going to be the most risky areas and what should be addressed first in the way of some kind of performance and or financial audit, depending on what they decided. Jim? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, when, when Katie had proposed a risk assessment, the purpose was to inquire as to what were the operational activities of city government that if we're not functioning property would lead to a financial loss? And I'll give you a hypothetical. Um, let's say you have someone in, uh, I don't know, let's just pick the Harbor Master's office. And that person has been in that role for a number of years and there's very limited um, controls in that department. And there, because one person is collecting fees and one person is, not recording the, uh, the number of fees that are received, and then those uh, deposits are not being made. So what you have there is an operational activity that creates a risk, which could result in a financial loss. And the purpose of the risk assessment was to identify the operational activities. And then the function of the audit committee would be to say, what should we do? Who should we engage on a, con on a contractual basis to come up with what are our risks of financial loss? How do we mitigate those? And what recommendations would they give to improving the operational activities? And that was both, and that was not, the, the function of the audit committee was to manage that external audit function that is currently not being done by our financial auditors. So, you know, the financial auditors from UHY address the, the annual comprehensive financial report uh, and all those other activities, these are more operational in nature. So uh, my problem has always been, I do, uh, and I will speak only for myself, not my colleagues. I have really very little knowledge of operational kinds of things across the city department. So like, I know we did do an audit on, the handling of cash or uh, receipts from the uh, parks and recs. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel very deficient in my ability to know the details of fin the financial operations going on in any, any department. And, and I don't know uh, who on the committee would really be aware of that. So yeah, Ms. George's a, us, yeah, her her request, Ms. George's request was not to have the audit committee complete the assessment, was to have the assessment completed by uh, department heads. Right. And then the audit committee would look at this and say, okay, where do we see the, the largest, the, the biggest gaping hole? Uh, and with our limited resources being what they are, where do we want to focus our resources on? Um, and again, we were always looking for opportunities where like with the uh, rec and parks activity, were there, were, were there recommendations that the um, firm made that could be applied to other departments? So could we, could we piggyback on what was done? It's kind of the equivalent of, say you were working in county government for you know, 20 years or so, and you, you knew that there was an internal audit function and there was an internal auditor within a county government who was reporting directly to the county council uh, and not up through um, county management. So this would be a similar type of arrangement where the external, I, I call it an audit firm, you could use just about any sort of activity, it didn't have to be an audit firm, but the, the external consultants would report back to the audit committee and say, these are our findings. And then the audit committee would then make recommendations to the city council. We recommend this, we recommend this. Of course, this, the audit committee is not engaged in implementing policy. 
and there is no threat contrary to the opinion of those in the office of law of uh, breach of executive of you know impinging on executive right. authority uh the the purpose of the audit committee is oversight there's there's four sites insight hindsight oversight and foresight and those are the sites <laughs> that a committee member needs I hope we okay. get that in the minutes. <laughs> That's all I want to get at. No, that was no. the whole purpose of see, the, the audit committee is an oversight function. Uh, exercise oversight to you know, demonstrate hindsight, foresight, and insight. That's all that, that that's the function of the audit committee or any committee for that matter. Right. So I, I, it's my, I'll get to both of you in a second, but it's, it's my deficiency because I just have had, a hard time wrapping my head around it. And and particularly, I've always felt that the kinds of things we're talking about really are part of the city manager's job. And one of the things that we're getting ready to do as a council is to give the city manager more resources. Uh, and the my hope has always been that then the city manager could do that identification. Now, city manager advises this committee, and maybe the, the city manager can suggest to us, here's an area that I'm worried about, along with my director of that department, and you have a budget, an annual budget. Uh, perhaps we can direct some dollars to this question mark, this area of um, concern. But um, let me turn to uh, first the city manager and then the uh, alderwoman from Ward 1. Right. I, what Tim was talking about reminded me of uh, Ross. You may remember when several years ago we had a theft in our finance department. <laughs> and I wasn't in this position at the time, but we helped facilitate bringing in at that time the county uh, internal auditor to help create some rules similar to what you were discussing that the city didn't have at that time right. to try to prohibit it going forward. And I would say that Jody probably knows about it and has those kinds of skills from her background, but I am, I'm pretty familiar with what you're talking about. We stood, stood one up in Charles County when I was there and then uh, Baltimore County was standing one up uh, when I was there. I was, only involved in it so much as trying to support that person to do their job while they were trying to remove her for doing her job. But um, whatever we can do to help, right. well, it's not entirely the role of, of this office other than to help facilitate it because you want it to be independent to also look at me and, and what I'm doing as well. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to give you a little bit of perspective, and uh, and I think Jody might be a, a good knowledgeable resource on that too. Okay, and and before I turn to Alderman Tierney, I, I'm looking at the um, charter. Clearly, one of the powers and responsibilities of the city council, uh, powers and duties of the city council include the power and duty to conduct oversight of expenditure of public money and the delivery of municipal services. So clearly in the charter, there is this notion of this uh, oversight that is the province of the legislative branch. And then when you look at the duties of the audit committee, that's further strengthened. And my difficulty has always been, and it's a deficiency on my part, but how do you operationalize that? And so, uh, Alderwoman Tierney. Yeah, I just, um, I'm looking back at my notes, the way I interpreted this, this risk um, analysis, I guess there's a difference between analysis and, and um, in, there's different terms, but in, I think the intention, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Jim or Caroline, from you know auditing perspective, was it was to give us sort of to formulate our agenda as an audit committee of what departments we should focus on. It was to cast, you know, cast a wide net from all our different perspectives and say, what is, you know, our finance, you know, financial more than really operational. Operational could lead to financial. And I think um, 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 
Katie George um, made an attempt to sort of approach it um, sort of like as a focus group. She threw it out to all of us to sort of randomly think of what departments do you think um, you know, we would have the most risk and, and, and as a, you know, I wouldn't call myself a lay person, but from non auditing perspective, I'm looking and saying, wow, you know, what about, you know, IT and, and all of that sort of cybersecurity stuff. And, you know, so we all kind of come together and say, yeah, the, the end result is we look at departments that are handle a lot of money. Um, does that say that we are going to find out, you know, does that say that we're right or wrong? I don't know. Would we have mentioned, you know, would we, who would have known? Yeah, we probably could have come up with finance department because they handle a lot of money. Um, well, here's a question. Let me turn it into a question. Wh how did we decide to look at parks and recs first? I wasn't on the com audit committee at that time, but go ahead. Oh, yep. <laughs> calling on Jody. <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of the, the committee was heading down the same, the same path with where, where is at risk? We had some budgeted funds set aside to conduct audits, and the committee asked uh, the, the then city manager, Teresa Sutherland, and I where we thought we'd like to start. And our top two departments were Rec and Parks and Planning and Zoning because they handle a lot of their own payments, and, um, and we really don't get a chance to look and see how they're doing that. So we, the committee selected Rec and Parks and we conducted an audit, which helped a bit, but a lot of, in a lot of cases, there weren't enough, there wasn't enough data to make any kind of um, clear conclusions about, about um, controls. And then we, we had set up some recommendations, which we worked on somewhat. And, you know, that's, uh, that's still in process as well. So uh, that's how that got selected. It was kind of like an informal risk assessment. Um, and uh, based on our knowledge, uh, Teresa Sutherland had been the county auditor um, and I had worked for her in that in that role as well. So we, we decided where we thought the risk was and it was just our informal assessment of risk. Yes, uh, Carol. Yay, I was waiting to, for you to, to speak up. Carol. Really, yeah, I try to wait until I really have something to contribute to the conversation because <laughs> ultimately everything I'm thinking you all ultimately get around to saying. So I don't want to slow the meeting down. So forgive me for being quiet until I have something that I think might be substantial. But um, I'm just kind of wondering if based on everything that I'm hearing here, you know, we have a strategic plan that's in the works. We have an audit that's being completed that will have recommendations for potentially some ideas for internal controls. Rather than us coming up with what the risk assessments should be or what we should be pursuing, why don't we take a combined um, uh, suggestions from both the strategic plan and whatever everyone's um, performance um, objectives turn out to be, mirror that with the internal controls that may or may not be presented in any sort of audit to see where there are deficiencies. And since we have limited resources to pursue an audit in any given year of a department, use those two pieces of information to select where we wanna mm -hmm. start rather than us trying to just, because I know nothing about city government and how it functions. So I'd be throwing a dart at the wall, trying to figure out where to start. I'd rather start with my best guess as to where there's a deficiency or, or, and or take Jody's or Mike's recommendations based on what they're seeing in city government than me sitting here as a lay person. I, mean, I know you're calling me a lay person I'm, or you're calling yourselves a lay person. I'm calling myself a lay person because I know nothing about city government. So I just see where am I throwing good money after a waste of time? I need some guidance as to where the deficiency is. So I turn to either performance objectives that are not being met, internal controls and an audit that are being recommended. And that's where I would start. You know, th thank you very much for that, because that does resonate with me. Just the mere question, do you have internal controls, whether it's just for finances, you know, handling cash or whatever, or any other internal controls, does seem to me to be a strategic question that we would want to ask. And again, I don't have any great expertise there, but I do understand that there needs to be systematic uh, uh, controls. And so that could be a good starting place. Just what are the internal controls mechanisms 
across the department, presumably starting with those that handle cash, but may grow into something, something bigger. Correct. Well, I don't want to, I know that I have my personal confusion over this. I don't ever want to let it go because it is one of our clearly outlined, defined responsibilities. Um, So I do think that we need to get back to this and I'm open to suggestions for um, uh, topics that could be put on our agenda uh, for other than just the term risk assessment, uh, a little more detail, a little more meat on the bones for a future um, meeting. But with the commission, the committee's permission, I'd like to move to the MML uh, question that uh, I was charged with following. And I have to tell you, I just got a, a an update from Jim Peck from MML on what other municipalities do in terms of their audit functions. And my gleaning, I'll tell you who he, he went to Bowie, Cambridge, College Park, Cumberland, Easton, Frederick, Gaithersburg, Hagerstown, Rockville, Salisbury, and Westminster, which I think is a pretty good selection. Um, a lot of variation in size, but also location. And so far, none of these municipalities, now Cambridge didn't report, Easton didn't report, have an audit committee that is independent of the finance department. And so every in every one of these things, he'll say like Bowie, uh, the council's feedback is sought at the annual presentation of the financial audit. Uh, College Park, the floor is open to the mayor and the council for questions and comments. Now, and, and it goes on in that same vein. No, no, no instance does Jim report that there is an independent audit body. Now, uh, I, I need to go back to Jim because maybe I didn't convey clearly what we're looking for, but I was astounded. I cannot believe uh, maybe we are in the vanguard in Annapolis, but I, I can't believe we're unique. Um, but that was the, the essence of his report is the council. And in one case, it was only the mayor and one alder person. Here it is, Cumberland. The mayor and just one alder person are provided a presentation of the audit where questions are welcome. It sounds pretty passive. So um, I think there's more work to pursue here, but uh, if this initial uh, summary look is accurate, I'm not sure that we're gonna get much help because if we're the only ones with an independent audit committee on the uh, legislative side of the uh, aisle, um, we're going to be pathfinder, pathmakers, or whatever. But that was the preliminary report. I'll be going back to Jim this week and saying, "Didn't I? Did I ask you the right question, Jim?" But he did go out to a lot of people, and um, so far the the look is that <clears throat> the council, to some degree or another, uh, participates in reviewing what I presume to be the internal audit that which we do participate in, particularly the finance committee. Um, so um, that's that's the report there. It's uh, surprising and not complete, but uh, that's what we have so far from MML. Questions? Yes, Alderwoman Pendle Charles. Uh, thank you, Alderman Arnett. I think we must be the vanguard and the pathfinder. We are the capital city of Maryland. So don't be surprised. I am not. And so that's my two cents worth for it this morning. I think um, Mr. Malinoff had his hand up earlier. Right. I was going to say, Ross, um, I might be able to help you with some. I was just looking online at what we had started in Charles and Baltimore County just started it, too. So we may you might want to kind of work a little bit with um, uh, maybe Mako and see what other resources they have um, because um, 
what I recall from Charles, there was an independent board set up. And I think a member of council was on it, a representative, but that independent board reviewed what the IG came up with. And I'm sure Jody is familiar with what was going on in, in Anne Arundel. And in Baltimore County, they were just standing it up. And like I said, it went through a little bit of a culture shock once they saw what they had, but um, there may be other resources out there than just municipalities. And, and that touches on several things. I think you're right. And um, maybe we need to go to Mako instead of Jim, but um, <clears throat> independent board sounds to me like, you are. pardon? It's kind of what you all are. Well, are we independent? I mean, are the three of us, Ellie and Rhonda and I independent? And that's why like the Financial Advisory Commission is truly independent. Uh, and um, that, you know, I, I have always worried that by having council members on the audit committee, there could be some taint there or at least some lack of independence. So we, we are stewards of the city and whether it's conscious or unconscious, we may have a desire to protect the, the city, the name of the city, and therefore not be as independent as you would like. But that that's something when we get back to, and this is something I kind of continue to put on the agenda from time to time, questioning our existence, our composition, uh, what are we doing, what can we do? And um, I, one of the things that I had hoped to get with this venture with MML was, well, how do other people do it? And maybe they're not. And um, maybe it has to be at a bigger level. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but I hope there's some lessons that we can gain from how other entities uh, provide the service. I see Rhonda has her hand up. Yes, and then on the that. Other, yes. Um, uh, just about the composition, I, I think it's important uh, for the composition to be the way it is right now. I mean, going back to what Ms. Ewing indicated, she knows nothing about city government. I think we lend that uh, lens as well as Mr. Malinoff from the staff side. So I think it is important. And I think it's really important for Alderwoman Tierney to be on here because as I've said before, I see the audit committee as a cousin to the finance uh, committee. And I think all of those um heads <laughs> on this committee is helpful in understanding the direction in which we're going. I mean, especially when you even talk about the strategic plan, um, that's something that's in our bailiwick, at least from a legislative point of view. Uh, like I said, Mr. Malinoff can give his lens when it comes to staff point of view. And of course, Jim and well, Mr. Cardillo and Ms. Ewing uh, give it um, their perspectives from from citizen point of view. So I think it works out well. Of course, having Ms. Dickinson on here is critical. So I think it is worthy to note that there, this composition to me is the right fit and the right balance. And I'm not rejecting that at all, um, but I will tell you <clears throat> there are other tugs and I, I will just relate quickly here. Uh, I've had conversations with um, former older person, Jared, Lipman and with former committee member Al Kirshner. And I would say there are two polls, uh, very opposite polls. Jared views that, and of course he was the older person that initiated the audit committee, that the audit committee should be largely passive, not meet very frequently, um, and basically oversee in more detail the internal audit and possibly come up with some suggestions about uh, how <clears throat> how the the small budget the audit committee has should be expended. <clears throat> Al Kirshner is much more of the mindset, and I need to have another conversation with Al, uh, that we should be doing this oversight of the delivery of services and that this should be external from the city administration, but really digging into are these departments doing what they're supposed to be doing? And, and that supersedes financial. Uh, that gets into 
say for transportation? Are we providing the right kind of transportation vehicles and systems and uh, throughout planning and zoning? Are they uh, doing the right kinds of things? And boy, oh boy, and I have had conversations with the city attorney on this and I could see the bristles going up <laughs> uh, when talking about that much more of a uh, interventionist kind of role for the audit committee. Um, <clears throat> quite frankly, I, I kind of like where Al's going, except I'm a daredevil and I'm always willing to get myself in trouble. But um, Jared really was the father of the audit committee and he has a very different thing. I, what I had, the reason I'm bringing this sidebar up is <clears throat> one of the things I had hoped to get from the MML look was how other bodies are doing it and how much do they cross lines with the executive branch or the administrative function. So Caroline and then uh, Alderwoman uh, Pendle Charles. In my role, in my day job, our audit committee is, as Jared suggests, they pretty much review the regulated documentation that we must produce every year as a nonprofit, our 990, our financial audit, and just check the box to make sure that um, we haven't failed significantly and that there aren't any glaring um, errors that need to be addressed or oversights that need to be addressed. I think that if what the alternative mindset is suggesting is that we're in there auditing the departments um, frequently, um, it almost seems like that needs to be a staffed position because I would not have the bandwidth to take on that sort of yeah. role. Um, and so I would suggest that maybe that needs to be an actual job of somebody within the, the city of Annapolis to follow up on those sorts of, of that at that level of detail. My view is it's called city manager. Right, <laughs> but, exactly, right. <laughs> Rhonda? Yes, uh, I, I agree with Ms. Ewing. I mean, and, and it goes right back to the point I just made, the lens and the expertise that we have on this committee. She's an auditor. Um, and so um, and so as Ms. Dickinson have filled similar roles and they are the ones that best know. And yes, I can see the city attorney bristling I'm not the city attorney, but I'm bristling too. And I do respect Mr. Kirshner tremendously, but uh, I think that's, uh, we're going, we're, we're starting to overlap a lot of functions in city government that we really have no business doing. Um, right. Yeah. Yep. All the women tyranny. <clears throat> now that I see um, Director Dickinson, <laughs> I'm gonna put her on the spot <laughs> and ask her what, she sees as our role as a committee. Okay. So, oh boy. I know, boy, do I always know? Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I never have any trouble giving up my opinion. So, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, it is mostly uh, aligned with um, Jer uh, is it Littman? Um, yeah, Littman. Littman, Jared Littman's audit committees are almost always formed to focus on that year-end reporting that takes place. In fact, most audit committees, at least in private companies, only meet once or twice a year. They review the audit carefully, the management letter, internal control reviews, any kind of reports that were done on internal control. Um, and in our case, it would be the single audit as well and scrutinize that. Um, the, the code here gives you charge of internal control work. If you, we were to hire a, an auditor for any purpose, the audit committee is the body that selects it. If we were to do another control audit, like we did on Reckon Parks, the audit committee would decide, would approve an audit plan and, and so help select an, an external audit firm to do that. Um, the whole extension into the performance measures, um, I think that was initiated by Al Kirshner. He, he brought that up and, and it kind of has taken the audit committee down a path that I'm not familiar with. I mean, it's not to say that's not your role, but it's just like this is that's kind of new. And it 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 expands your 
your responsibility far beyond as you can see is is um you have time to undertake and i think that goes along with what um, caroline was saying um so if if you want to go that path that's fine but you, there's going to be more time and effort involved um and we have to be in a place where we have a strategic plan and we have valid performance measures. But then the audit and the, the tracking of those performance measures and our adherence to them um, is just a very, a, a very broad um, path to follow. And so if you're trying to focus, it's been my experience, audit committees are almost always the smaller role, annual audits, uh, they would... If there was a, um, an internal audit function as the county auditor, the county auditor reports to the council. Uh, the audit committee might have uh, an auditor report directly to the audit committee and do some of these functions, but that's expensive. I mean, you, you're talking staff, space, resources, that's expensive. So, um, so if we if the city decided to go that route and try to do an independent audit function, it should likely report either to the audit committee or to the council directly. So before I go to Ms. Ewing, <clears throat> do these audit committees look at Gadsby rules to see if we're compliant with all of that? No, because no, I, I the don't auditors, have that. <laughs> the auditors that you hire to do your annual audit are very knowledgeable about FASB or GASB rules that apply to the entity they're auditing and you depend on them. And in fact, some of their, their annual report to you is not just the financial statement. It's a report on internal controls. It's a report on how they got along with management. There's a, a, manage, a, a letter that says we did or did not have conflicts with management. Here's how the audit process went. Here's all the adjustments we came up with. Here's our concerns. So it's not just the financial statement. It's those other elements are reported to the audit committee or audit body um, annually. So that's their role. They're the experts. Uh, me as a finance director, I'm supposed to have knowledge there, uh, but they're the ultimate independent view on whether or not we're complying with all that. Caroline. I completely agree with Jody. Um, <laughs> our role in my experience should be not to try to find out where we should do an audit, but be prepared to receive the results of an audit that was generated by the city, the city manager, the city council doing their jobs of wanting to improve city performance. The audit committee would then be in receipt of that audit, would review it, would poke holes in it, but ultimately not responsible for hunting down where the where the weaknesses are in the city government. So, um, th thank you for that. And <clears throat> it makes me question, um, and it is because we changed the code to provide that this committee also look at the strategic plan and the performance measures. But that sounds from both of your experiences that that is far afield or at least a field from <clears throat> what typical audit committees do. Uh, Jody, and, and I wanted to add that I believe the code charges the audit committee with hiring any audit audit function that's going to occur. So right. you would be in. I'm not saying you wouldn't say, "Hey, there's a concern here." I think I have. Um, you know, the audit committee gets the reports from the um, ethics the hotline. If something came up there, and it would be the audit committee's purview to say. We right. think there's a concern here. Somebody's reported something in this department and we charge you to go there and do something here, you know, conduct an audit. Right. I, I, I see that as a part. And especially since it's spelled out in the code that you are to hire or retain auditors. Um, right. And that's where Jim and Caroline have already fulfilled a function. Uh, Alderwoman Tierney. Yeah, I just want to um, step back and, and say that I think that is what our um, roadblock is that we're sort of talking in circles. It's, you know, it's sort of like the old architecture adage form versus function. We have to, we have to decide what our function is before we start talking about what our form is as far as, you know, the, the makeup of our committee having all the persons, what have you. So I just, I, I think we need to differentiate 
first what our role is. Or else I, really I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> and that was my confusion. My very first meeting with this committee was when we were going through the exercise with Katie on the risk assessment. And I'm saying, whoa, what, what are we doing here? And what, what is the value added that I feel <clears throat> as an elected representative, I can add to that? And my answer was, other than maybe common sense, I didn't feel like I had much to offer. And I really question again, and we go around this, whether this is something that council members should be on at all. Um, so I think we're still feeling our way. I am happy to hear, I believe it was Caroline, you say that, uh, or someone said that first you get a strategic plan and that, that helps you <clears throat> focus on where you're going. Um, Jody, I agree with you that uh, I just don't feel I have the uh, anywhere near the kind of expertise that I would want someone in this position to have to get and muck around with Gatsby and FASB and all of those kinds of things. Uh, just not, um, excuse me, just not um, my expertise and even not my druthers. Uh, so, all right. Um, are we ready to move on quickly to the last item of the agenda, which is an update, if any, from the finance director? Can I ask one other quick question? Certainly, certainly. And I, please, I say this with all respect, um, but before we have another meeting where our performance objectives, risk assessments, and strategic plans are on the agenda again, because that's been on the agenda for a year since I've been on this meeting, how can we move forward from that? What do we need to do to determine the, the actual job description of the audit committee? Um, do we need to take those things off the agenda and put on the next agenda exactly what the city code says we've been charged with and break that down into what we're actually going to do going forward? Um, what is our next step to get to the bottom of this, I guess, is my question. So that's a good question, and I won't pretend to have an answer, and I think we all as a committee have to answer that. But we have added legislatively the performance measurement system um, to the to our duties as an audit committee. Now, as an audit committee, we could suggest as a committee to the legislators on the committee that should be taken off. I, I would have some qualms about that because I think it's actually something that we, we really do have some ability to, to add, but, um, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, and I will admit I might be part of the perpetrator of this confusion because I myself, as chair of the committee, have been confused about what it is we really are doing. And it's all from a perspective of where is our value added? Are we doing make work and spinning wheels, or is there a real potential for value added from a collection such as ours, three citizens, three legislators. And <clears throat> I'm certainly receptive to any kind of thoughts or inputs uh, from any of you independent of a public meeting and we can continue to pursue it. But I do agree. I think there's a crude expression that comes to mind, which I won't use, but it is time to uh, make some determinations and and move forward. And if that means some legislative change uh, to the responsibilities, which is where our powers and duties are defined, then maybe we need to get onto that. Mr. Melanoff. Uh, I, I don't know, Caroline, were you in on the early discussion about the uh, person we had discussed regarding the strategic plan and scheduling a date in January 7th? I do remember in our last meeting or two, there was conversation about so that. We, um, in this meeting, it's become a little more galvanized because I'd identified uh, somebody through ICMA. She's proposed some dates. I've discussed those with Alderman Arnett and she's given us either the 7th or the 28th to be with the council. So we're going to schedule that. 
And then um, the council also approved the position that's already in the budget, but changed its job description and, and salary somewhat. Um, the assistant city manager and that person had done some of the tasks in the past that like the performance measures and the monthly reporting. So I think come, I think in November or December, we'll have that date pinned down. We can report on that, but anything really substantive won't come until probably after January 7th. Okay. But I think, Caroline, if I construed you correctly, your, your question was much more fundamental. Is that even uh, the performance measures and the uh, uh, strategic plan even a function for an audit committee of the sort you are familiar with, Jody is familiar with. And I, th I think that's a question I've been asking as well. Um, we can, having three meetings a year instead of monthly with a very narrowly defined would make our jobs all a lot easier. And I agree with Alderman Pendle Charles that <clears throat> that is also a function of the finance committee. The finance committee also looks at the audit. So, uh, you know, I, I think it is time for reckoning. I would personally resist pulling the trigger on that quite yet, but um, um, I'll ask the committee's guidance on that and indulgence. But uh, uh, I think it is coming. It's overdue, but it, it I think it needs a little more. Uh, the stew needs a little more percolating, or if that's a mixed metaphor, if you will. Um, I, I think Jody is on the move. <laughs> Was there any quick uh, things that you had to keep us up to date, Jody? And if you don't have anything, that's fine too. Um, no, uh, I did want to say a couple of things. One, we sent to you the single audit. The single audit, there was a deadline of September 30th and by golly, the auditors got it to us a couple of days early. Yeah. So therefore we sent you all a single audit report. I would encourage you to read it. There was a finding in it that we had to respond to, and we might want to, you might want to put it on the agenda for next month to talk about in detail. All right. Uh, so, and Jim's looking confused. So we did send it to the council. So um, Ross, I don't know if it was in your materials that you sent around for this meeting. Um, no, because I'm quite frankly, have missed, missed that. I didn't even realize we got yeah. the single audit. But. Yeah, so we got it a couple of weeks ago and Julie sent it around to council mayors, department heads. Um, what I don't know for sure is that the, the I think the audit, uh, no, not the audit committee. Okay, so um, we'll send that out to everyone. Like I said, we just got it couple days before the end of September. So it's not as if um, it, it's that late com coming to you. There was a finding that we had to do an action plan for, uh, but you can read about it there in our action plan. And then um, we can talk about it at the next meeting. All right, We've already thank you. We, it, you know, that's a, the single audit for uh, fiscal year 21. So it's like a year and a half past. And this this year end, we we remedied what what the what the issue was, and um, fixed it and had a better control process over it. So we've kind of already fixed the issue. So, okay, um, good. I'll be glad to explain that in detail. And um, we're you know uh, staffing issues. We we had we've had a lot of interviewing going on. We have four positions we're trying to fill. Um, and the last two, three weeks, we've had interviews. We had hired uh, an accountant position that's been open for a while with a what we thought was a really good candidate. And on Thursday morning, day one, she didn't show up. Mm. Not, and so we've since gotten an, a brief email from her, but not after we searched for her <laughs> unsuccessfully on day one when she was supposed to post for work. So. Mm. Um, so this person is not taking this position. And so we're back to square one again. So um, yeah. we have hired another, we've extended an offer for another position. Um, so I'm hopeful for that one. And um, 
So maybe one of four, and then, um, you know, we have to, we still have a procurement officer as one of the positions that's open as well. Right. Okay. So we still Thank you for that. face the Any continuing from staffing the issues. I, um, I do have one question. Um, in the past, I, I don't know, we've established a practice where the audit firm um, presents to the audit committee. Um, are we going to continue that practice or not? So it, it's not it's not codified. It's just a practice that that has been established. That's something that the audit firm is supposed to do annually, anyways, to either to the council or to the audit committee or to the governing board. And they did do a presentation in the spring with just the ACFR, without the single audit. You got your presentation, but the single audit wasn't done. It was not a part of that. Do you want them? I'm sure they'd come back in and. Uh, and talk about the single audit if we wanted to, but remember they're no longer our auditors. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't recall. I, I thought my recollection was we had we had said let's wait until the ACFR is done and the single that, that we would do one comprehensive like one one meeting when when all uh, deliverables were completed. I, I I must have missed the meeting. I'm sorry. No, I'll go back and we can go back and look at the minutes. I thought we had them come to one of our meetings and talk about the ACFR and the and the letters, but. And again, you know, I could I could be wrong, but I thought we had them come and do it in May. I think. Mm, I don't. I, I will have to check. I yeah, I'll check. Up, but, I mean, it could be. Yeah. That clearly, but at this point, it's it's kind of a moot point because the firm is no longer engaged with the city, right. and I doubt that they would make an effort to meet with us. Yeah, I think Sean came and gave you a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, okay. and talked about the report. Oh, um, and that was right. virtual. It might have been virtual. So uh, I think it was May, May or June. Was it um, a council work session or an audit committee? I think it was an audit committee meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, all and, right. And, and, that, and again, that could be wrong if it's virtual. I, who knows? Right. All these meetings blend together sometimes. So is there anything else for the good of the order? Uh, Alderwoman Pindle Charles. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Dickinson, may, just a yes or no question. Do we have any sense of the problem or the challenge we're having in hiring? I, we don't need to get into details. Do we have a, a yes or no? <laughs> Do we have well, a sense? In the past couple, in the past year or so, I think the issue is the market for candidates. And when we, you know, a few years ago, when you advertised, you'd have a lot of really solid candidates apply. And now we get a lot of applications, but only a couple are um, have the experience or some kind of close experience that you're looking for. And then they're interviewing with a lot of other people. And I know that in a couple cases, the assistant finance director, I ran that, I ran that more than once. And um, one of the the people, as you know, I gave I extended an offer. They wanted an extended start date, and then they took another job. And they only informed me about a week before they were supposed to start. Then we we ran it again, and I talked to two different people about the position, and um, they 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 weren't interested. It wasn't enough pay, and one of them took another position somewhere else for more pay. And um and so with Julie, we got a good find, but it took quite a while. The and procurement the officer is committee. <laughs> and procurement officer too. We've extended the, the procurement officer job to two really solid candidates and they both turned it down. One stayed where she was and, and I'm not sure about the other candidate, but uh, it's it's market driven. In your circles, Miss Ewing and Mr. Cardello, any suggestions? <laughs> Send candidates our way. Jim, I think those who are formally on the audit committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I struggle in my role uh, trying to fill. I have three open positions between DC and Chicago that I, I it's almost impossible to fill. Yeah, we had 27 hires this year for our school year. We normally have five, so it was it's hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a narrow world just hiring finance people. I I also experienced similar to what Jody did. I had somebody three days before they started, you know, before the scheduled start date renege. Um, that's a fact of life these days. It's um, disappointing too <laughs> that you waste all that recruiting time waiting for them to start because they ask for a, right. you know, start in right. a month and then they just don't show up. Yeah. Right. 
that was exactly the issue here. It was scheduled to start on Monday and Wednesday afternoon. They should decided not to uh, move forward. So, all right. Sorry, I don't mean to. No, to in, in I need, need to hear that. No, Thank you. just to hire financial people these days around it is extremely difficult. Uh, there's not a big pipeline of, of people coming up. And there's a lot of positions chasing very few people, which means they're throwing a lot of dollars at people. Alderman Tierney and then Ms. Ewing. Thank um, you. Yeah, just two things really quick. Um, I have to ask this as finance chair in your in your review of these app, applicants, do they is there any negative in not having a, a privatized or a 401k? Does that ever come up? Especially if you're dealing with the finance, you know. No one's ever said that specifically. Uh, it, it's it's something that I'm concerned with because to gas somebody to you're not going to get any employer dollars towards your retirement unless you stay with us for 10 years which is what the state's vesting period is right yeah that's really a hard sell if they leave before 10 years they get zero employer dollars toward their retirement and, and it, that's got to be something we change because that's not what today's workforce is all about they yeah. want to be able to leave with what they've collected right. and move on and if we're not going to um cater our offerings to the workforce, it's, it, we're just going to, it's going to be an issue. They don't necessarily enumerate what's, what's attracting them elsewhere. Um, and maybe we need to have some kind of exit interview with people that turn down offers. So we know why they're not accepting it. But a lot of people that don't, they just don't reply. Like this person that we were looking for last week just wouldn't respond to phone calls or emails. So um, they just kind of go ghost on us. Um, yeah. It just seems like it makes us, you know, not current or viable. Um, but my and, and I also have a problem, uh, you know, something I've talked about with Tricia and the city managers is the uh, pay scale that we have for our non-represented professionals is tied to union longevity steps. So if you hire them further up the scale, they have to wait several years to get a merit increase because that's because we're tied to those union scales. So that's another thing that we're trying to un. On, on hitch <laughs> and make so, it more flexible so that so that we can offer better compensation packages. Yeah. So before I go to Caroline, then Mike, uh, in the federal government, just as I was leaving, <clears throat> they created a separate career track, which um, really raised the level of technical people. So they didn't have to become a manager to get into the SES. Uh, or even uh, get above a GS-15. And maybe that's something um, we need to be thinking about for finance and possibly for engineers. I'll leave that thorny problem to the city manager, but um, we can't sustain. I know how hard your staff work, Jody, and, and that's <clears throat> got to be discouraging to put in the extra hours and not get the help. So we're not we're not helping ourselves at all with um, not being competitive. I just uh, wanted to give an update on the candidate. Lastly, Anne Marie, um, it, it's new to me, but since it's an aldermanic appointment, um, it goes to Regina versus Hillary, and that application is in Regina's hands right now. And, and the next step is for it to go to the mayor. So, and I, but I think it goes to finance committee. That, that would, I'm not sure. But okay, I'm getting confused messages, but whatever, <clears throat> let's get it done. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want vacancies. Caroline? Uh, I just wanted to say I went back to my minutes and I found that CLA presented its act for report on June 21st to our okay. committee. And I also wanted to say just in my experience, um, it's definitely an employee's market. So in order to attract the best employees, you have to convince them that they want to work for you. Mm -hmm. um, and having, and I know, you know, you're a, a civic institution, but, you know, trying to bring your benefits and your pay scale up to current trends would probably be very helpful. Yeah. Everyone wave to Anne-Marie right now. She's watching. <laughs> <laughs> join us, join us. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. City Manager. Mute. You're on mute. Two things. One, um, Jody's right. Trisha and I have discussed this issue of the 401, the fine benefit versus what we do now, or or the uh, 401. 
And um, there's uh, going to be a lot of moving parts associated with extricating ourselves from the state pension and negotiating with our unions. I've tried that before here, and it's, it's a lot of moving parts. I agree with you, but it's not very easy. And secondly, coming in this morning, there was a uh, on NPR a discussion about the benefits of hiring internally because of this job market. <laughs> exactly on point to what we're talking about. And um, you might want to listen to it. Okay. Um, did you need me to drop by retreat in order to move forward or did you find the article? Are you asking me? Yes. I Remember I sent you a text message? No, I did, I did not see that. If you can drop it by. Oh, yeah. I... Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I was able, I couldn't cut it to send it to you, but I did, was able to can, print it. Yeah, if you can drop it by, because I didn't yeah. find it. I was sitting here going through the papers while the, uh, uh, while I was on uh, no video, so I couldn't find it, so please. All right, I will drop it by. Um, right. Anything else for the good of the order? Failing that, thank you. I thought, again, we had a very productive meeting, if not yet conclusive, I still think we're moving forward to a conclusion. And so at this point, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Thank you.